Today's show is brought to you by Gunpowder Lodge. It is the number one place to watch Premier League and all your soccer games in Baltimore County. For great food, great people, great atmosphere, featuring weekly chef specials. They also have a great setup with outside seating and a fenced-in children's playground next to the Gunpowder River. Happy hours, Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. to 7 p.m., located at 10092 Bel Air Road, Kingsville, Maryland. Hi, I'm Tim Whitman. Today's guest is Mark Metric. Mark Metric is having a birthday today, right? 62? Yeah, 62 yeah, years know, old. Yeah, he looks I've great got for some 62. I've experience now behind yeah. me. I'm feeling good. You know, I don't look 62. But no, you look good for 62. I'm yeah, telling you yeah, that. But you. Mark was my roommate when? Your first year? Second year? I was your roommate when you used to work out. I noticed you don't do that so much anymore. <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, I don't know when that was, but it was a while ago. When was that? It was, it was nine, 30. Eight, no. 80, 88. 88, so that's 31 Baltimore. years. Um, yes. Good math, man. I'll tell you what. Did you see that? I'll tell you what. That's from. Impressive. Yeah, for all my years of school. Um, three yeah, years. So we roomed on the road a lot and stuff like that. Yeah, that no, was fun times. Yeah, he uh, came straight from England. Mark's got a, a great resume on him. Uh, came from England. Man, you. I did not know that. You never told me that. Well, so, 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 so what I did is I, I, I played, you know, it's kind of interesting, just my journey, whatever, but uh, uh, Man City, when I was a real young kid, like at 10 years old, my family's from about fif 15 miles outside of Manchester, so uh, I, I did that, and, 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 and back in those days, I signed schoolboy phones for them, which was at 14. But so then, I don't know whether everybody knows what schoolboy is what is yeah, I hear I that know. all the time it was time. just some protection that you had to stay with that club and you couldn't go to another club and it was kind of a big deal at 14 sure. it wasn't pro you know it was just a, 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 a kind of like a territorial mm -hmm. thing for the club so you train with them and, and, and all that so that was obviously a, a great experience but you know difficult but good but uh, you know I failed there to get a contract so at 16 back in those days that's when you would get a contract so I stayed in school, um, but then we got lucky uh, playing for the town of Manchester, got picked up by Man United, uh, a guy called Eric Harrison, um, who has been a, a big figure in the youth development players, like Beckham and those mm. guys, and a tough guy. But anyway, went there and uh, got an opportunity, stayed there for the, like a couple of seasons, took a year off school to try and get a contract with them, uh, failed again. <laughs> But it was good, you know, this is part of your, how you get better. And I, I was coming from an extremely competitive environment. And then uh, I had a guy come over from America, watch me play for the reserves for Manchester United and got offered an opportunity to come over here. So I played in college here right, uh, for four years and had a fantastic experience where I could combine the education and the soccer, which was very unique and is unique to Yeah, they America. don't do that there, right? That no, you, you, and that was a kind of a difficult bridge for me or a, a decision uh, you know to crossroads because you know I couldn't um, in England I was basically I had to go to the lower leagues and, and, and the, like the farm leagues type of lower leagues to play but they weren't really supportive of you getting your education anymore right uh, and, and so and then the university system doesn't is nothing like it is in America mm. so they were like well we're not supporting you to go and play for this team so I kind of didn't know what to do and then I got an opportunity to do both here so it was perfect for me so You're all American right yeah, yeah, a couple I don't of times. How can that happen? Uh, you're English, but you got a, you're an all American. That's a good How question. You know, I'm not I sure. I think everybody back then was. I think it was all a foreign, all American. All -American all, right? Well, yeah. What's that? Everybody was back then was a foreigner was an all American. Uh, there was maybe two all Americans from America. Well, that's a good point. I mean, no, there was more. I mean, but the, and it's funny you say that in Division Two. My goodness, there's so many international. Oh, that's players. crazy. And yeah. even in the mid majors in Division One now, there's more because. Funny enough, as you know, we didn't have the internet back then, did we? So people didn't know your backgrounds a little no, bit, actually, right? Yeah, so, yeah. yeah, but then there was a lot of rules in the NCAA. When I was coaching Division One, about you had to sit out so many games, and it was kind of like difficult to find those top players because they would have compromised NCAA rules, right? Uh, but now it seems there's been a lot more cooperation, and you know they had a crazy rule like if you played on a team that was uh, had other pro players in the team just by affiliation you were a you pro could, even if you weren't it. so so it's kind of but that's all changed so now there's more 
opportunity for international players, and that's why you're seeing it. I mean, and you can understand some of the mid majors doing that. I mean, you know, certainly I Loyola had quite a few international players, uh, but they're getting older players and and the players that have played at a very high level. So you're seeing more foreign players. But going back to your point, why was I all American? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I, I, I guess now I am. I mean, I'm an American that's citizen, right. so that's great. And uh, maybe it should be all Anglo-American. Today's show is brought to you by Barracuda's Locust Point Tavern, located at 1230 East Ford Avenue, Baltimore. Come down and see Billy Hughes. He's been a chef for over 30 years. Barracuda also has daily specials. The codfish cakes are great. I was down there last week, and I had the fish tacos. Brilliant. Billy puts out a great dish, great atmosphere, friendly. What more else do you want from a place? Neighborhood bar and restaurant. Now, do you think you have to go abroad as much anymore? I know this is a tough question for you, right? But I understand. let's say Division One, or even yeah. Division, or whatever it is, Division Three. Uh, I know years back it was the thing to do: go abroad, get some kids, they didn't quite make it, come over here and play for the college team. So everybody was loading up with foreign players, which I have no problem with. I'm, I'm okay. My my whole thing, even as a player, because I was from Baltimore. That's not the reason I'm playing for the Baltimore team or whatever. If this guy from at the time at Yugoslavia or England or yeah, wherever it was yeah, yeah, is yeah. better than me, well, yeah, so yeah. be it, right? Yeah. So that's the same thing I see here. But sometimes uh, coaches are persuaded, this was before, were persuaded if they were uh, foreign coaches, they were more likely to to like a foreign player, right, a little bit more. And back, I know when we were when I was playing, even before you, uh, the American was looked down on so much. There yeah. was rules where you had to have three Americans. Uh, right, and yes. Yeah, 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 and yeah, yeah. you had to have them, three Americans. Uh, so it was very difficult to, to, to break in a little bit, and especially, and especially if you had a foreign coach, right? So yeah. for me, being Tim Whitman from Baltimore, from Calvert Hall High School, compared to Stan Stamagovich, who played on the uh, uh, Yugoslavia uh, national Belgrade, team and Red yeah. Star and, you know, had all this background, you know, where's the comparisons? I mean, there isn't. I mean, so it's difficult to break in. So I'm, I'm asking you, in a sense, is it, is it the same anymore? Well, I, think it's, uh, I would say, and again, I, I now I'm coaching in Division Three at Gettysburg, so I'm not in the Division One realm, so I, I, I'm not as current as maybe I should be or could be but uh, what I have noticed is certainly you know some of the mid-majors in order to bridge the gap between them and let's say Maryland or, mm -hmm. or you know or Penn State or whatever that they do bring in foreign players and you know if you can bring in a 21 year old okay, German, but why? German well it's, it's to win uh, no, no, no. I understand the win winning part of it, but why do you have to go abroad? That's what I'm asking. Why do you have to go abroad? Well, because, again, they can get some... The education systems might be different where the players are a little older. They've had, you know, you know, they've maybe very good players that, you know, if you can have a freshman come in that's 20 years old and he's from Germany, he's played in the Bundesliga youth system, right? And, and, and he's mature and he's had some ups and downs. Sure. And like, and you, uh, so you've got a choice. You can bring that guy in or you can bring in a U.S. Academy kid that's kind of... Not a season. And not a season, and, right. and he's just in a, a different part of his development. But he's got to win now. I mean, it's common sense. Okay, so... So it, it's, it's, he wants to win. So, th I mean, there's more to that now because I think the rules have become a little bit less rigid. And uh, So there's more so getting the, players the, from... The, yeah, your, okay. more more than ever. More than ever. And not okay. just like back in the day. I mean, I came from England, right? I didn't know where I was going. I, 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 didn't, I, I thought I was going to Harvard. Well, I, mean, I ended up going to Hartwick. I saw an eight. I saw an eight on the building. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I'm like, I didn't even know what side of the country, you know, New York was on. I was like, I landed at Newark Airport. This is in the days of Marvin Hagler. You remember him? Right, the sure, the boxer, yeah. absolutely. And uh, uh, yeah, so I'm like, this that guy's from here. This is a tough place, right? Right. right. And uh, I landed at Newark Airport, and I'm like, you know, where is? Where's Hartwick? Because I thought it was in Newark, right. you know. And where then, are all the sheep at? Yeah. And then, and then this uh, coach picks me up and. Four hours later, which is a long way for me as an English guy, right? I'm like, sure. where are we going, man? Four hours? I mean, I would be in France. Yeah, like, I never traveled that far. Anyway, uh, upstate New York, beautiful school and a great experience. The coach is fantastic. Uh, but, yeah, so, uh, you know, I, I, I didn't really know what I was getting into. But now with, I mean, you're getting players from all over. I mean, it's not, 
you know, back in those days, how we could compete because the other teams weren't doing it. There was a few, Clemson were doing it, some others, but, you know, they didn't know, we didn't know any better as players, but now that that player, like I looked at somebody, like he, he goes to even, the, he, we recruited a kid at Loyola, he went to Clemson. Like there's no, like, you know, there's so much exposure out there. Now you're getting players from Poland, you're getting yeah, right. from, yeah, you know, all over Europe, Germany, Yugoslavia, well, you know, sorry, uh, Serbia, uh, you know, you can get them from South Africa. And, and with the internet now, there's all these companies that do that. Trying the to bring kids over. For those coaches, is getting the right ones. Does that hurt the development then? Yeah, and that's a question. That's why it's difficult because, in a way, it does. Obviously, it's like the NASL back in the day when it was all foreign players and it was tough as American players to play. The break in, Dale Roth or Remember those? Who was the, there's a couple of guys. Sonny, that, uh, Sonny broke you, in, yeah, but he yeah, got yeah. pushed out by a uh, certain player. Uh, but so, so yeah, so it's, yeah, I, I think it's a good question. Um, and again, what's, so what's the, concerning is this: is like in Division Two. I remember one of my four friends who's now a, a coach in the NAIA, which is a different league, and he was showed me. This is about ten years ago. He showed me like the All Americans in 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 the Division Two, and it was like. 44 players and three American lads and everybody was foreign. Now that was Division 2 at the top level Division 2 but I think that has m now merged into the mid-majors so schools that used to not go there are now going, going there, there again. Yeah, because oh like they've got players gosh. from France, I mean Spain, I mean it's it's all over. So and again you can't, you can understand the coach's dilemma is look his AD, yeah, he's he, got to win. win. That's right, right. What if, okay so Maryland, everybody wants to go full time. So this is your minor league Right, your stepping stone colleges, right, for Division One, to go into the pros, right? Yeah. A lot of them. A lot of kids aren't leaving at 17 anymore for the younger teams. I meant for the pro teams. The younger players aren't just leaving at 17, 16. You mean in America. In America, yeah. right? So this is their development is a lot of the college. Am I correct? Yeah. Okay. So if that's the case and that's your development, then and you're they're all foreigners. Yeah, where did they go? And, and, I mean, the, and the, so they're getting opportunities. So, so should there be a limit? I mean, uh, see, potentially. The, but then I can get the other side of that coin is it's competition and you right. have to get better. And I do. I do yeah. agree with that. But sometimes it can get skewed in the sense that I, what we were talking about before is that if the coach feels that these people are better, right? Well, let's say the kid's 20. He comes over and, as a freshman. Well, you got a kid that's coming in at 17 who's a freshman who has the possibility of being a better player than this guy, right? But he's not going to get that chance now. Mm -hmm. So that, in a way, is a problem, yeah. right? But the coach says, the heck, look at my record. Yeah. So now, you, who's turning this around for the college? I mean, who's saying, is it U.S., saying, we want this from the college? Or they're saying, okay, so what, we get a 20-year-old, no, a 26-year-old guy now who's graduated from Maryland. I'm just using an example. Good, we want him. Or a 24-year-old, we want him to play pro in the U.S. And now he becomes a citizen down the line, and that's okay? But do you think at 13, 12, 13, 14, I should say, we'll stop there, that a foreign player is better than a, a U.S. player? Wow, what a question. I mean, again, I'm not... You in, were from the... See, I this know, is where... Uh, well, so, so, like, I, I, again, I can't... It's difficult for me to be... I mean, I can only give my opinion. I'm well, not that's over all anything, but so... Right. Uh, so in 34, I just think they have a, a, a better culture in terms, and the U.S.'s culture is growing tremendously, and the academy has been doing a good job in terms of improving training, improving coaching, improving that environment. But, you know, if you're at some of these top pro clubs uh, in Europe that are like, you're a kid fighting for his life to get an occupation. So it's culture. Uh, uh, it's definitely culture. I, I think the culture is stronger, and, 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 and yeah, uh, so I do think at the top level. But now, let me say this to you. I think the top American players are better than a lot of those players like myself that maybe didn't make it or, or somewhat right. failed to make it to go pro. So that's the you know an interesting thing is where's that line for coaches where and again it is a, it's an interesting dilemma like the 17 year old young american lad who at 20 is going to be very good mm -hmm. you know uh, it's unfair to compare him to a 20 year old foreign player that's coming in because the guy's got three years if just physically yeah. and then you now, know, some now, of the experience he has too right yeah. and there are some rules i mean where you know there are some rules about the NCAA has cracked down a little bit on you can't, there's some limitations that affect the age of players, you know, so I think it's like you can only have one year off after high school, you can't have like three years off and come, no, then come you know, back. Yeah. Right. So there yeah. are some 
limitations there. But, uh, you know, I, I think the happy medium is to get the best American players you can get and get some international players if you need them as a mid-major. I mean, I think at the top level, when you're talking Penn State, you're talking Maryland, mm -hmm. you're talking, you know, stamp, those kind of programs, they don't need to go foreign because American players are better than the foreign players. Right, they're getting it's all the top the American players. major right. opportunity. I think that has become a lot more foreign than it used to be. Mm. Okay, development. Why is development better over there than here, you think? That's what you were kind of saying in a way. Well, so uh, the structure here in the U.S., right, with clubs, right, with the academies, why you, do you think, coming from that culture, other than just the culture, that it's better? Wow. So it, it's, it, it's, a, it's an interesting thing. And again, I, I've seen it in the last 25 years certainly grow tremendously in, in the U.S. And players okay, are better. The growth, trainees get better. But growth, but what, what, what does that mean, though? I mean, growth, yeah, we have more kids playing. But what does that mean? So what? We have more kids playing. Uh, they, they spend more money, right? They're, they're getting coached by, I don't know, this is what I'm wondering, right? Who they're getting coached by. Yeah, but our numbers are great. Our numbers are getting better. But what the, that does that yeah. means nothing. It's it's quantity over quality, maybe. I don't know. I'm no, asking when you. When I say growth, I don't mean numbers. When I say growth, I mean level of play. Okay, yeah. there you so go. All right. I, I think the players are better, the training's better, and the environment's better, and it's shown growth, and it's continuing to get better. Uh, you know, as as U.S. soccer, you know, looks at the challenges it faces. I mean, now with the growth of MLS, I think that's a good thing. You know, obviously with the pro game, I just wonder myself, like, you know. Those players, and, you, and you're similar, like, you know, you, you, you know you're know, coming from a background where you, you kind of see soccer as an occupation and you see it as a, a, a professional occupation. And, you know, even in some countries, it's about, well, I want to support my family through soccer. And there's that kind of like economic side to it. And, and I think uh, we're missing that a little bit. My worry about the soccer right now a little bit is uh, are we you know, uh, losing uh, communities because they just can't afford to play because you use soccer at the end of the day, you know, has become a very commercial enterprise. Is it middle or upper class? Yeah, well, it's definitely middle, you know. I don't, you know. So how many so, people are you so missing? How, so and that's, that's really concerning because, again, I think if you look at the rest of the world, I mean, these are young people. I mean, look at Wayne Rooney. You know, right. he comes from the streets of Liverpool, right? And, you know, he was proud of, of, of his heritage and he wants to you know, get a better life, I'm sure, and through professional sports, and it pr produces, you know, a toughness, man. I so mean, if you if you grow up in São Paulo, Brazil, and you want to be, you make it. There's a lot of, there's a huge, you know, uh, uh, number of players I think that come from that economic, working class background. Right, they they have nothing to fall driven, back on. Right, know? that's so, right. Yeah. And so again, I, I worry with uh, a little bit about the economics of of, of soccer being, you know, outside the Beltway sport and, uh, and so forth. And that's a, that's a bit so of So leaving the city that. out of it completely. Yeah, we were talking, Petey was here, Petey Cringe was here last, uh, last week, and it's the same thing. What if we were saying that if there was courts in the city, just like basketball courts, but little soccer courts, right, would the kids gravitate to that? And it was for free. And they were allowed to go and just express themselves like they do in a lot of different countries. Uh, then that little culture, basketball were hu is huge yeah, here yeah. in the city because there's a court, there's a court, there's a court. They can go out any time and do whatever they want, right? They can get away from all the, the chaos that's going in maybe in their life. And maybe that's an opportunity. Who's going to do that, though? I mean, there, there's been strides of trying to do things like that, but it, it falls through. So, so then you're saying, well, U.S. is never going to get to that point, right, to where these other countries are. But the facilities are tremendous. The opportunities are tremendous here, in a sense. Uh, but do you think is the coaching is there yet? As a overall, you've been in this right for a long time. I mean, you've gone from uh, you know the Division One, Division Three. You're coaching a kids team now, right? Yeah. What what age is that? Uh, it's a Baltimore Celtic team, and it's 05 age. Okay, just plug them. Okay, I but did, anyway, I did. <laughs> I'm just Let me say that again. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Uh, so I'm not allowed to say that. No, you Come can do on. whatever you want. I'm just kidding. Uh, so you've been through the whole gamut, right? Of this, uh, I've coached girls, college. I've coached men, professional. I coach kids under ten, under twelve. I, I've, I've done the whole gamut, also in a sense. Uh, and I can honestly say, at a, I'll give a division, a division three top school for women, 
right? Division three, top school for women. And they end up getting close. We were in the final four, the blah, blah, blah. And the, the situation was horrible as far as coaching goes, in a sense, right? And nothing was, and that's one of the top teams, Division three in the country. And the, the coaching, I shouldn't say, but the whole process of taking these kids to the next level, it was horrible. Right. Uh, and, and, I, and I meant I was part of it, and it, it, it was horrible. And I have a feeling, so you have a Division one or whatever division it is, it doesn't make a difference to me, and they have a great record, right? They have a great record. Well, I, we have a school that people want to come to. So naturally, I'm going to get some of the top kids coming to this school, and we're always going to be competitive. Let's just use that for example, right? Uh, but that's as far as it goes. So that's one example of coaching. Then I see some guy posting something up on Facebook. He's won all these championships, right? He's done all this, these tournaments, tournaments, tournaments. So I'll go out and watch them. And I'm thinking, what the hell is going on here? I mean, I was a, a, a director at this one club. Yeah, and so they're, they're bragging about this one coach. And, oh, we haven't done this. Morgan, uh, no. this is, it's getting cold uh, now. I but like again, of it. Again, this is for radio. Cheers, Cheers mate. Espresso. Not espresso, espresso. That's nasty. Mm. Brilliant. What does this do for us? It takes us to the <laughs> next level. Okay, so they're, they're bragging about this coach because his team's doing so well. So I'm undercover. I just start. I'm undercover hiding on the side because I don't want no one to see me at the time. And I'm watching this. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. And... I didn't say anything to anybody, wrote it down. Went, I thought, well, maybe that's that session. Went back. Again, didn't know I was there. I thought, oh, my God. Then they were doing defend, uh, a defending drill. And I thought, he's defending wrong. He's showing the wrong thing. And this is your top team in that club who's getting all this recognition. So that's just one example. I'll give you another example of what was happening at Division, Col uh, uh, Division three at college at, uh, at the higher level. Uh, and the coaching... No one's, who's caring, right? The team's doing well. Okay, they're doing well. Yeah, yeah, uh, in both, results, yeah. Yeah, in both circumstances. So, but me, on the other side, I'm looking, I'm thinking, this person doesn't even know how to run without the ball. This person doesn't know, they're, even not, they're not defending right, they're not doing this. They don't know how to take a player on properly. They're doing it through uh, strength and uh, speed maybe, but there's certain things that are so minor that are not, they're being overlooked, but it doesn't matter because they're winning. I see a ton of that in, in some of the top clubs, right? Uh, in, well, obviously in the lower clubs. Uh, but then on the other side, I see some really promising situations. But you have to have instant gratification, yeah. right? The internet, right? Uh, Facebook, everything's instant gratification. You're looking, you don't like it, you sc scroll. Uh, we need instant wins. We need this to be, have more people to the club. We need all these little things that are taken away from the true development, right? So how, why is that going on? I mean, not why, but how do you change it? From your standpoint, being in all these different levels that you've coached. Well, the, and that's a lot. That, I mean, there's a lot of things going on there. Do you think that's Tim, happening and here? I, and I, again, let me say this is, I think it's an exciting time. Uh, I do. I, I think there's a lot of good things going on. I think we're moving in a good direction. But there's some major challenges, too. College and youth development, uh, you know. Certainly in youth development, you know, th there is a commercialization that we fall under uh, as parents. I mean, I've got two kids. I get it. And like, But, like, we play so many tournaments. And, the, you know, what are the tournaments? I mean, obviously there's this whole getting a medal or whatever and then playing a lot of games in a very short period of time. Well, I'd prefer to see less tournaments and more training. And so, like, at, at, at the youth level, like, can we get more training in so players can thrive okay, and develop and grow? but who's training them? That's my issue. Well, that's, the, that's again, a that's where we're going. But what you can't do, which you think is a mistake, is try and be a, 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 a model that's a European model or a South American model. It's got to fit into the American culture, and that's the challenge that we face. So uh, there's a good side to the competitive level of youth sports, but there's also this commercial side, which can be counterproductive. 
I mean, obviously... So that's the American culture. So then why would we want to fall into the American culture well, if it's counterproductive? I think it's on the clubs too. Is Because uh, again, I, I get that they're businesses, but you've got to have the right people at the younger ages. The ones that say, you know, it's not about so much me winning a national championship at under 13. It's more about me developing players. And my true evaluation is where are those players when they're 16, 17, and 18, and where are they going? Are they going pro? Are they going into college? Do they love the game at 35 years old? Because I tell you what, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out how to win at under 11. Right, you get you know, obviously good athletes, get good players, and let's don't play out of the back, just kick it and get it to your athletes. Right, there's a night, you know right. what? That's a way great. you could win. That's yeah, right. yeah, that's right. and, and again, that's not good development, is it? So, it's where again, it's that merge between competition and education of players and, and, and trying to find coaches that are confident enough. So you're trying to find a culture or you're trying to build a culture. You here you're trying to build a culture. Yeah, and you've got to right? see the end product. And you've got to have the confidence and the experience to... And, and it, again, it's a, this is one of the big differences. You know it. I mean, we're paying a lot of money as parents, right? <laughs> and like, so what do we become? We pay, uh, you know, we become a board for the coach. I feel sorry for the coaches because, again, the, you know, Unfortunately, some parents are more knowledgeable than others, but we, we're judging success on winning at 11 years old, and that's a problem. You know, success is not necessarily that. Uh, you know, we want to be competitive, don't get me wrong, but you kids have got to be love the game. They've got to be prepared to fail, and it's not about, you, you know, winning. Uh, really, it should not be that, that, you know, I think sometimes, again, with coaches that are caught up in their own ego or are not that experienced, think that success is winning at that age. And, and for me, it but is But doesn't not. that come, again, that comes from above. Okay, so let's take the example of this college, uh, the Division Three college. So you see this going on. You're okay. You're okay. We're doing well. This team's doing well. But above them, above that coach, someone has to step in. Someone has to say, this is crap, right? If not, and everything's just okay. Everything is, you know, we're going, we're going, we're going, we're going, we're doing okay, we're doing okay, we're doing okay. So why bother? Why take it to the next level? And this is where I have a problem. I, I, to be okay, right, or to say we're winning, what the hell does that mean? Where's the next level? Who's going to step in and, and, and do this? Well, I mean, you have an athletic director, right? He might be a great guy or a girl. I don't, I don't know what it is. But, again, probably the reason they hired you, I'm assuming, again, I'm assuming, because they want to go to the next level. Uh, that's all I'm assuming. I'm not saying the other coach was bad, but they probably looked at your resume and they said, you know what, this guy, you know, I think he's c quite competitive. He wants it. They had an interview with you, and I think he's going to take us to the next level. That's the way it should be. Right, but I do not think that's happening here in the states. I not just for that one example. I see it with clubs. Right. Well, okay, we've got a hundred thousand coming in. We're doing well. He's good. This guy's going to bring another team in. So that's that's twenty times blank dues. Right. That's nice. Let bring him in. And yet the coach is horrible. Yeah, oh, right. and again, that's one of the issues. It's a real challenge. Uh, you know, uh, I'm getting uh, fired up. No, Can you I, see I, it? Can I, you I, see I, me I love fired? it because one, it's my ex <laughs> the espresso. Right. Uh, Two, these issues. Uh, so. Damn it! We're going to get this solved today. Go, Mark. Good luck with that. Right. But, uh, <laughs> uh, so uh, you know. So yeah. But again, it's a it's a it's a big problem because if you're a business, right, and you win at under eleven, that's good for your club, right? I don't know. I well, no, I business, know what you're saying. It's a, a business, business. It is. But here's my other people think. Oh, I should be on that. Here's club. my comeback. Right. Well, I think you can develop and win. It takes a little bit more time. It takes. Let's put it this way. It takes a lot more time. Right, it, it takes patience, but I think that you can do. But everybody says, "Here's their excuse." Well, we're, when they're losing, when they're losing, they're not doing so well. And we're trying to develop these kids. That's a that's a huge excuse right. now, but that's not the truth, right? All the time, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. But I do think you're going to get your bumps. I think you're, you're there are going to be some setbacks, but I do believe if you have the right, it's just like the Premier League. It's like any league, right? We're we're trying to figure this out. We we'll get a mixture of some older players. We get a mixture of some youth. We get a mixture of some people that are working. We need some experience. It's the same thing. So if I'm developing a young kid who's quite, not quite there physically, well, I'm maybe matching somebody else to counter that. But in, in another year or two, this kid's going to be the best player on the team. And it takes a lot of work to develop a player. So yeah. if, I'm, if I'm working nine to five, right? I got a nine to five job, I'm working nine to five, then I got to come to the club and coach for another two hours, right? Where's my energy to develop a kid that's not quite there yet? 
Yeah. It, and I think that's part of it. I because now if the guy's full time, mm. right? There's very few full time uh, club people, and if they are, they're usually the the person, the people that have put it together, and they're collecting money off dues, and they cannot. Right, and I even went through this when there was a hundred teams. Right, you cannot oversee a hundred teams all the time every day. You just can't. You've got to spend money to do that right. So if I'm spending more money, right, and I got to take something out of my pocket to give to somebody else, what happens then? Hold up, break. We good. We good. Uh, no, I don't think so. Yeah. So is that your hair on your chest coming out? That's a lot. No, of that's a. Right. We good. So, so the, yeah. I mean, you hit the the beauty of the challenge, right? It is competition and development, and how those merge and, and where you're at, and different kids, you know, have different paths in terms. But you of don't think it's going to happen. But, but you don't no, think that's no, going to happen. No, I just think it's a challenge. And, um, um, but I think you know one of the connections that you're making that I'd I'd, I'd, I'd I'd think about would be, is college, the really you know, the route to the pros. Because right now, I don't think, you know, if you're a Christian Pulisic, college is not. I mean, the reality of, of this is, is and I wasn't love, for me. I, I love college. I, I love the model. I think there's unbelievable facilities and unbelievable opportunities. And I do think there's great coaches out there. There uh, are. Yeah, so, so all that's good. But the reality of it is, Tim, it's a hybrid. It's not the world game. I mean, the substitution rule is Come. nuts. Twice in, or whatever you can go I'll back give you an in. Example it, like, like this, and this is Division why, three like, is division. Like, if right. I'm a parent of a kid that wants to go pro and is at elite, elite level, I'm talking. I'm sorry, I get the value of the education, and maybe I have to consider that, and maybe that's the best route for my kid. But you know, but for that top player, I mean, college soccer, uh, and they're trying. I'll talk to you about this in a minute. They're trying to change this a little bit, but it's like this substitution rule, like. I remember when I came over here, right? Uh, we played a game, and I'm used to a 90 minute match, right? Right. So it, it's me against you, right? I'll probably win that. Yep. But, uh, you know, it's, it's me against <laughs> He's you. He's always been so, in the back of my number. You so, come uh, here, you know, you're there, uh, lean uh, forward. I, I could, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anyway. But anyway, so, so centre midfield, right? So we're playing against each other. This is a 90 minute contest, right? And I know that. And I'm like, all right. And you got to train you, for you that. Can keep you're going. Train. You know, you, you'll be good for 20 minutes, but I'm going to wear you down. And sure, I'm in really? my mind. And I think I've done the work to do that. And I'm excited for that challenge. Even if it's the 85th minute, eventually I'm going to win this contest, I think, because I understand what the contest is. So this is one of my first games in college in America, right? And the rules of subs hasn't changed really that much from those days. It's so. 22 minutes in, right, you go off. Yes, and, and so I go like this, and I'm still on. And I'm like, okay, he must be hurt. You know, I'm going to take on this new guy. All right, so this new guy's coming in. Now I've got a 70-minute battle against him. And it, me might be good at the start, but hopefully I'll wear him down, and that's part of this contest I'm going to have with this guy. Half time comes, you know, whatever, get my little break, whatever. Second half starts, you come back in. So I haven't figured it out. I'm like, huh. He must have had a tweak or maybe a sore <laughs> ankle, but he's fit now. He's, he's okay. So he's back on, right? 22 minutes later in the second half, and now I've been on, you know, what, for 65, 70 right. minutes, is... The other guy comes you, on. You, right? You're off. And I'm like... So my whole challenge has been disrupted. You're a 22-minute soccer player. I'm a 90-minute okay. soccer player. And so now I'm irritated. And as you're going off the field, I'm like, are you all right? Do you need a rest? I don't need a rest. I'm just still out here. Do you want to come back on it a little bit later? Because this guy now, I've got to fight against him. So, again, that's a massive do you different think he challenge. Could, but do you think, so, again, I'll take the opposite side of this. That's a good way to develop players. So let's say, this, at least you're getting the kid's feet wet, the other kid. So let's say you have 22 kids on a team sometimes, right? Do you, I know for the top one, right, let's say you have a freshman who needs to get time. And you can get him in there. Right, let's just use this for example. So it's a freshman. So you can get this player, I keep on saying him, him or her, to get, to get that time. Uh, and he gets his feet wet. And so, again, it's up to the coach how they play their, 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 their system. Uh, I know then you're saying to go to the next level, right? He's not used to that 90-minute game because there's three subs, right? He's not used to that. So uh, that's, a, that's a draw, but drawback. But on the other side, I'm getting this freshman who otherwise may never see that field. And that's valuable time from 17 to 22. If he hasn't played, oh, 
he's got no chance. So well, so so yeah, no, there's a development angle, but not this. It's, it's a hard one. It's always been a hard one for me to get over. Is uh, I mean, there the can be probably more generous than three, but not to the level where you're making 20 subs by halftime. Like some coaches, oh, I mean, they whole line and, changes. And I, and I don't oh. mind. I don't. I don't. I don't. I, I, don't, I understand. I mean, uh, look, we got to win, man. You, you, you're in a competitive. So do you think that's going to win? So so like they would. See, you, you have coaches replace six players. Like in 22 minutes. So, and again, do you tell me, is the college game, is it a good game? Is it, is it enjoyable to watch? Is it, would you say, I think it's flow? got, I think it's got 10 times better. I think it's got 10 times better. When I, years ago, when I was playing, right, this was, you're talking what, 1940, 50, when I started playing? When you started playing? Yeah. So, <laughs> so, so think about this. I went to a Loyola. Loyola. Uh, I was coming out of high school. I, I knew I was going pro, right? I had got drafted. And I went to Loyola, had some kind of little spring, spring game. I went and played with the other team. I was with the other team. And I could not believe the level. The level was horrible. I mean, I was 17, right? Or I might have been 16 at the time, right? And I'm, I'm thinking, this is horrible. I, don't, I do not want to go to college. I'm going, I'm going here. Yeah. And it was hard. Now I'll watch a Maryland play or some, and I'll watch certain top teams and the way they're knocking it and they're doing this and other. That's not so bad. Some of that's I, it's ten times better than what it used to be. I th that again. So one of the things I'm doing, and, and, and it's kind of interesting to me anyway. But uh, like obviously I'm always seeking challenges, and I probably study the game more now than I certainly did as a player. Oh gosh, and, and you're even more up in other now things. than I did right. twenty years. I mean. I think one of the benefits of me now coaching Division Three is giving me more time to be a little bit more analytical about how we play and what we're trying to do. Why is that? I, you said this to me before, I, I, I and I don't know I whether I agree so with that. I spent so much time recruiting and worrying about getting the best players. It took away from... Uh, I mean, I, I, trust me, I've always been analytical about the game and have been... Uh, want to get better and always trying to keep moving and try and be current, you know? Like, right now... I, 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 but I think I've had a bit more time to do that. Maybe... I've maybe got, is it your age? Yeah, that maybe you've later come in life. I, I, I can't, bit, yeah, and I'm not so. But but I like the challenges of the tactics, you know. Like so, like Guardiola. Like I've spent a fair bit of time in the last few years trying to study him because I think he does marvelous stuff. Now, let me ask you this: like, so one of his things is like, you know, one of his big things is like 15 passes, right? If you get 15 passes, is one of his tags, and the reason for 15 passes moves. is to disrupt right, moves the, disrupt the other the team, team right? move them around right. a little bit. But it's also because he's into this positional play where if he has got 15 passes, right, that the players are in a vicinity around the ball right. because they've so moved they into these get it back, can get it back in four quicker. seconds, Barcelona. whatever it is. Yeah, exactly. Quicker, quicker. So, so unbelievable. Now. What if my team in college only it doesn't get 15 passes, it gets three. Okay, so like, then, uh, but that's that's Guardiola, right? Then you have Liverpool. Right, so there's Klopp. So now Klopp is more, uh, you know, hunted and get forward, hunted and get his, forward. But his condition is tremendous. Yep. The players that he picks are are hardworking, honest players. Plus, so they're skillful. Very. Uh, the I think top that's more probably attributable to college than it is the Guardiola thing. So, but again, you're trying to merge the world game into this. What, what is, at the end of the day, a hybrid game? And again, I, I think it's a great thing to do. I think it's a good route, but I, don't, I think for the elite players, I mean, this is what I'm saying to you is this. MLS is what's really the big factor, I think, in terms of having that pro league. Yeah, and they having, can look up you know, to, they can follow you know, right, the academy you, systems. I mean, yeah, the teams and have opportunities them. to go that route more, more opportunities to go. It's not you know, you And know, that's where the future is. Uh, I, I think, and I, that's what's exciting. I mean, you look at, uh, what, is it Mercedes-Benz Stadium or whatever? Where's Atlanta? Atlanta. Atlanta had 76, 72,000, DC right? United Brilliant. was sold out. I mean, this is then. Then you're going to get your kids in your inner cities. Want to. Going, so, it's, like you say, in the solution of building some facilities, maybe you'll get kids to play. But, uh, you know, probably not. But, but if you kids see a future in it and a professional... Well, they have somebody thing, to look to. Yeah, like, they have so, like that's the your NBA, culture. Whatever. That's your culture. Yeah, and, and so th this is what the other world countries have that we've been missing. And they have. I think, and again, PD was here last time. When we were growing up, they said 10 more years. Yeah. 10 more years, it's going to happen. 10 more years. But the issue, I think, is those players that played soccer, right, or played football, whatever you want to call it, right, uh, and now coaches. That's the difference because now it's cul that's culture, yeah, yeah. right? I, I have a kid, Generations. right? Yeah. I have a kid because I used to play, right? I'm going to introduce this to, to my son or my daughter, and I think that's where the change is. Now, when you see all these people playing, 
now they become coaches. Now that culture is slowly, uh, it's changed. And I think that is going to be a huge difference. Then the World Cup, the Women's World Cup, I think that's going to, uh, the women's game is going to go to another level for at least two years, right? But I, with the farm presence, too, and people trying to get players from here to go over there, I think that, that's going to be huge. And, and we're good at it, right? Uh, the women are very good. At it. And I think the men are good, too, but they, they're at a different level at this particular time. Uh, so I think that that definitely will change, right, so in time. So let's go back. I mean, and again, I agree. And again, it, here we are we 10 years. Old. I've heard it since I've been in America since 1983. Yeah, but, and, you know, it's hard to have patience sometimes. But I think it's still growing. Like I said, I'm excited about what the prospects is. I mean, the other thing about college soccer that, again, I, I, I think the MLS is what we should be talking about in terms of, like, the elite levels, and, and this is where there's going to be a big magnet and improve our culture of producing top-level players, right? Because college, I don't think, is, going to, is doing that at the moment, and I think they're going to get better at it, and I'll, I'll so tell you why in a minute. But look at this. Look at how they play games. Like We play in two months. Let me get in, is hey, Morgan, just pan over here yeah, for a yeah, second. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay, yeah, yeah, he didn't yeah. have express yet. Yeah, yeah, Go yeah. ahead. So Friday, Sunday, what is that? What is playing Friday and a Sunday? Well, like, that's so, a joke. You saw Bayern Munich play. That's the you academy, know, right? You're you know, talking about Borussia Dortmund on a Friday, and then they play. I don't know. Are you talking about Schalke the academy or pro? I'm talking about you know even the academy. Let's say it's the, the well, they age changed group, the rules the finally. Twenty three, but you know we're playing in such a compact time that how is that relative to Not the official. pro game that the MLS is playing? No, uh, that's right. You're talking about college game too, so, right? So, that's right. So I think this is exciting, right? So now, and, and Sasha down at Maryland, mm -hmm. the chairman of this committee, and, and uh, it, it, I think they've been pushing for years now, and they've got it in the legislative cycle, which is exciting. It's like so, so the top five conferences are, are really behind it. I think maybe the Big Ten and the ACC are the big pushers of it. So they've got some big support there. And what they're trying to do is push the college season instead of cramping it in in. Two months, three months and playing right, a championship months, yep. in December the 17th in Columbus, Ohio, when it's freezing cold mm -hmm, and the Cleveland mm -hmm. Browns have a game and nobody goes, or a, or a ice storm in St. Louis, which happened, and then nobody goes. Instead of uh, doing that, it's having a championship which is more relevant, like lacrosse has in the spring, and moving the seasons from fall to spring, where now it's not so compact that it's better for this, the quality of the games, it's People better for injuries, recovery. Right, Sports right. science is saying this now, that, that you know, it's, not, it's causing more injuries. Sure, this, come you on. Know, ah, that's and obvious. this is a problem in youth soccer too, like sure. I told you. But like, so, so college right now, I mean, a two-and-a-half-month two and a half month season and a championship that's irrelevant a little bit, right, in a lot of ways. Like, like we've got a, the exciting thing to p push forward here is if they do it like they're proposing to, I think, is like 10 or 11 games of every Saturday, the quality games, and then another, you know, the next, doing the spring similar, and then have a championship that's in May, you can have a, 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 a venue and a, and a quality championship. There's a final where you're getting 30,000 people. I mean, it was in 1999, was it, or something like that? Or, they had 20,000 at the finals, right, in Richmond, because it was a good venue and decent weather, right? We've gone down since then. So, and, and again, I'm sure the bigger picture here is like of the future, the NCAA is part of this. They have to get excited about soccer. Now, if they see MLS producing 75,000 people down in Atlanta... Right, they might get they, on board. Yeah, that's exactly. Right. I mean, base, money. baseball, I don't know. I mean, I'm not a baseball guy, but I, I can't... I've seen him throw... You should see him throw oh, a I, baseball or football. Oh, I, my actually, I gosh. Actually, I did that one. It's terrible. Oh, that was it, awful. Was, it was... I don't know what it was. Oh, it was awful. Yeah, but go like ahead. Cricket. Like that. <laughs> You've been We're, drinking, yeah, right? That's yeah. right. No, but yeah, I remember, I remember having a snowball fight once in America. And this guy laser beaming me in the head, and I was throwing hand grenades. I'm like, I'm like, oh my god, what is going on? Like, but anyway, uh, um, so we, we're talking about you know the, the 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 connection between college and the pros, and like you, you look at uh, American football and the college connection to the pros. It's the root, right? Uh, same in basketball. It's the root uh, where soccer-wise. 
you know, I, I think we've got to do a better job in college of, of emulating the game that's played. It can't be exactly the same, but not this two-month thing, the subbing rule, and compacting it so much. But put it into the spring, get a better championship. I mean, I remember, and I bring baseball up, is I, I thought, and I'll be wrong here, but I thought that baseball, you know, back in the day, the college scene was okay, but there was more going to farm teams. Like, like the Fred minor league, the triple A's, that's and that right. was that's a route right. for somebody like you, mm -hmm. who was not soccer, but a local guy that wanted to go pro. And they go into the into the minor leagues, but college uh, baseball has bounced back now. The route is through college more. The championship is much better. They've extended the season. I mean, you see college baseball at the end of June, so they have really uh, tactically said we're going to improve this and make it a better route to the pros. And I think you know college soccer has to do that. And then I so think okay, so at seventeen, do you, is baseball, basketball, football better for you? At to stay, you can waste certain four years in college, right? Not, I shouldn't say waste. You yeah. can go four years in college, <laughs> right? right? You and that, you yeah. still come out as a top pro. Yeah. Is 17, 16, 17 the age to for soccer? Is soccer a different sport than those sports? No, I, I do think there's a route for players, and there is. You don't now. think it's too late the time they come out at 22, 23? For, for, for some, and yeah. It, I then you got to break in, right, to the main team, yeah. 22, 23. But you're saying if the game was better, yeah. right, and if the game was uh, more realistic to the pro game, yes. right, the then game. that would be your development stage, and then you'd come It'd up be to more the more relevant. Right. And then, but don't you think here's the problem with that is then who is Maryland attached to? Pro wise, right? Then who is, or is it just a, a big draft and everybody knows to look at? I'm just using this for example uh, with Maryland, uh, and that's their minor league. Do, don't you think there's going to be more of a connection with pro and college, and that's the problem? Maybe their NCAA, they're saying that this is school, is education comes first, then then the sport or whatever. But when you start doing it this way, you're saying no, we're gearing these kids to be pros. But yet they do do it in baseball, football, and, 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 it, and they're trying to say they don't. It, it's a joke. You know they do, right? And there's huge money. Coaches get paid huge, right? The schools get paid all this big money. So is soccer, I meant willing, or the, the schools willing to say, we're going to, we're going to go that path now? Well, yeah, it's I think that's some of the yeah, problem. Yeah, no, it's an interesting question because, again, we'll, you know, like when you get, like, we'll look at lacrosse. I mean, what do we get, 50,000 sometimes? Yeah, the that's, there's no pro league but, there. Yeah, but, but, again, it's, right, it's is, exciting. But, it's big time. It's, you know, down at M&T Stadium and all those things. So where's ours in college soccer? Where's our big uh, championship? I, I just think that it, it can be a route. There are always going to be players that can get the quality education and become professional soccer players. But it's not uh, easy. That's a hard... Yeah, it is. But there's players that can... There, yeah, that's more couple. of the American system. Right, uh, right. And, and I think there is... There well, this changed that. There was a player in England, that, and again, it was very rare. I remember Steve Highway did it, I think. He got Steve a university Highway, degree. I remember played him. Played for Liverpool, right? So the, there are players that do that. And you know the guy, the big centre-back for Man City, who just... Uh, um, for Man City. Belgium. Um, company? Oh, yeah, it's a company. He has his MBA. He has his master's. He played for the time. NBA? Yeah, he played for the NBA. <laughs> and he has the NBA. So he does both. Right. But I know, but so again, so it, you know, there are routes to that. And again, That's few. I, I, don't, I don't think, I, don't th I think it's just another pathway. But I do think, again, you know, aligning more, and it is part of the collegiate system, is to align with what the pros are doing for a route that way where you can do both. And I just think college soccer has to do think a it's better, better job. And it, that goes back to administration. That goes back to the NCAA having a imagination for soccer. Well, it's because they don't. They don't at this point There's because it's they weren't brought up that way. Yeah. They so were brought up with other sports. We need more ADs. We need more administrators that see the potential for soccer. Now, so that's the college route, right? But then again, you've got the growth of MLS. There's always going to be that player that says, I don't need to go to college, and that's fine. I, what do you think is a better route? Right. To go pro? Uh, the, no, to go pro. If you want a pro, to go pro, right, and do you think it's the college route, or do you think it's leaving high school and going right to, not leaving high school, I don't but think it's a matter out. of better. I, I think it's... It, really? It, it, well, in terms of... Really? Like, so you're taking your chances. I'm an I'm a owner, or I'm a, a coach from another team, right, in the MLS or over in Europe, and I'm saying, I'm going to rely on this college coach to bring this player up. All right. So if you're looking at just better, in, if you mean by better, what's better for the player to make an impact and be a professional soccer player, it's obvious to go straight to the pros. 
Is that what you want? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I, I was it's fishing out. Okay, no, right. I, no, I'm no problem with that. It, it, Your time, I, okay. I mean, so, you know what? You, you, I, look, I, I totally support education. I, 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 well, I mean, no it, one's I, like, you know, denying that. Yeah, right. and, and, I, and I think it's a great thing. And what an unbelievable system where you can pursue... You do coach college, goals, right? Uh, and I do actually coach in college. <laughs> in my job. So, so that's an influence on my uh, comment there. Right. But look, it's uh, you, you know. But you, that was but. Yeah, you but. know, it's just for some people, college isn't it, and that's okay too. I mean, uh, you know, I, my brother never went to college, and he's uh, you know doing really well, and good for him. So I'm not stuck on the I have to go to college. Today's show is brought to you by Gunpowder Lodge. It is the number one place to watch Premier League and all your soccer games in Baltimore County for great food, great people, great atmosphere, featuring weekly chef specials. They also have a great setup with outside seating and a fenced-in children's playground next to the Gunpowder River. Happy hours, Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. to 7 p.m., located at 10092 Bel Air Road, Kingsville, Maryland. Okay, so when I'm, I'm 17, I, I'm starting to play pro, right? Yeah. So you come out at what age? I'm just using for example. 21, yeah, well. No, you came out of college when? What, how old were you? Uh, 31. No, nope. uh, <laughs> uh, I was, I don't know. 23? 20, 20, I was 21. 21, if I was born then, so that would be, oh, 21, 22, yeah. Okay, so you're 22, okay? 17, right, 22. 22, 17, right? Yeah. Five years. Yeah. So right there, I'm just using this for example. So I've got five years experience at the pro level. Oh, there's no doubt. I'm not, I'm not making that argument. I do, so I, the time you get out, you're trying to break in, right? And it had, could take you a year or two. Yeah, well, and I've, and I've had two months or two and a half months of a college season, and then, you know. So there, all these factors no, go in. There's That's no right. doubt. But, again, I think it still comes back to your decision as a person about, you know, do I want to pursue both? Do I want to just focus on this? And, again, there are some huge benefits obviously of doing both and there's a benefit to just focusing on to becoming the but, best but you talk pro, pro coach but be, becoming the best you, soccer player well, you need to go strictly play. soccer yeah you yeah, gotta go you, you, okay. it's an environment you can't yes. how can you duplicate for five years if you're in that and like i said to you and you the, the locker you, room the stresses you know, the uh, the players the uh practice and the training right all that well you know what it's like you, you mean you were semi-competitive when you play <laughs> And, uh, uh -huh. you know, like, uh, you, you, know, you, you know, it's that, you know, you're fighting for a job, man. Uh, every it's day. Not, you're I'm, fighting I'm against this person to, every day. Uh, yeah, and, and it's my job, and i got to get ahead of him, and, and I've got to make a living, and it might be a situation where I'm trying to help my family out. I mean, what a great cause that is, you know. Sure, That's, to push you that way. for four or five years, there's a ruthlessness to that and a, a competitive mentality and a, and a, and a toughness that uh, isn't in college. I can remember Kenny all the time. I don't know what it was. Whether he wanted to see me fail, I have no idea what it was. Anyone who would come in knew, he'd have me race against them. This is how crazy it was. And so I said, oh, not again. New guy coming in. I'm thinking, okay, I got to go. And this is, has nothing to do with soccer, right? Or he'd watch and have them What do you mean go, run against him? Like? Just, it was a sprint. It was a sprint, right? And I thought, what is going on here? This has nothing to do so with soccer. So you just put you on into the field? I was on the line. <laughs> the other guy was on the line. We'd run. Right? And I thought, here we go again. Right, This happened two or three times. So then I can remember new players coming. Well, we're bringing in the back. I thought, oh, God, here we go. Right, Every day it's something like But you get to love that. Well, I, yeah, yeah. And you get yeah. to, I, you do, and you again, thrive. You, you oh, use I, that edge a little oh, bit, right? Yeah, like you're like, I'll show them. And, and well, It was just like know. signing a contract. Yeah. My first year, it was year to year, right? Then by my, well, it was my second year, they gave me a three-year contract, right? And signed it, and I thought, oh, this is great. At least I feel settled. After I did, I had a great season after my final season, right, of that, that contract. And I said, no, I don't, I don't want to sign multi. I want, I want the year by year because I didn't uh, have that edge. Yeah, I thought yeah, maybe yeah, yeah. I'm losing that little bit of edge. And that push out, got to play well because right. I don't have a contract. Got to play well. So that, that environment, right, again, when you're 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, whatever that is, right, I think it's huge, right? Well, again, I, I think the development of the game is MLS, right, in terms of the top level that you're talking about. It, it, that has got to continue to grow. And it, it's, what has it got now, like 30 teams? I mean, obviously, I'd love to see something here, uh, obviously, grow in Baltimore. Like, we, 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 we need a, a, a pro so, team, a USL cool. team or something. You know, obviously, USL, I don't Philadelphia think has. I don't think decent, USL is going to make it here. Uh, I think if you don't have big time, if you're not MLS, you're not, I, I think you'll get a following. 
I just the way Baltimore is. Well, yeah, but but again, you know, I think this it's it's encouraging though because it's like uh, you know you got a first division, a Premier League, second and a third, and and there's going to be some. You think there'll ever be relegation? Of players, even. You know what I, I mean, think the problem is. You, they should have relegation. I'd love to have that. Relegation. I would love to have that. Uh, I don't think it'll ever happen. But but regardless, you can still develop players because Red Bulls have a second team in yes, the division. Yes, it's just yes. like in Germany. I mean, they have what the the Premier, the Barcelona top league, has a B team. Somebody else has a league, team. But then they're, they're very developmental below that, and they and they have like the second teams in the third or fourth division, and right. it's a very development player model. So, but again, you, you know, but that's all good for the sport and having professional sports. I think. Uh, growing is going to be a real magnet to improving our whole game. The environment, you know? right. Can we take a break? Today's show is brought to you by Barracuda's Locust Point Tavern, located at 1230 East Ford Avenue, Baltimore. Come down and see Billy Hughes. He's been a chef for over 30 years. Barracuda also has daily specials. The codfish cakes are great. I was down there last week, and I had the fish tacos. Brilliant. Billy puts out a great dish, great atmosphere, friendly. What more else do you want from a place, neighborhood bar, and restaurant? Go. Well, what would you like to talk about? No, you were just talking about when you were over in England with your daughter. Yeah, so I had a fun trip. Uh, last week, uh, my, uh, my daughter is 15, and uh, we, we, she went over there to stay with my family. My mum and dad are still alive, so, you know, 79 and 80 years old. So it was a great opportunity for her to spend some time with them and, and my brothers. And she got to do some training over there, so it was just with a particular club, or yeah, she went to a, two or three clubs. Okay, and, uh, just again, we 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 like the idea. Of, firstly, is to spend some time with the, our my side of the family. Obviously, such a nice boy. Yeah, You're such a nice boy. Don't <laughs> well, believe half yeah, of this. Yeah. Go ahead. But anyway, so it was drunk it was cool. the whole time. Uh, and uh, um, <laughs> uh, so anyway, so but the other thing was obviously she could train with some of these clubs, and so she trained with with, with a club. And what was interesting is to see it's so different there. You know, like. Uh, and the, you, like you mentioned earlier, the Women's World Cup and the women's game here is tremendous. And, and, the, and, and the, uh, at the top, I mean, all those clubs around the world, the women's teams, obviously, the, and coaches look up to the women's soccer here. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. rightly so. It's, 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 it's the best. So, uh, but it was interesting, again, their system, which, again, I don't know, it's different here in the U.S. Is, uh, one of the big differences is, obviously, is like... Um, the whole Title IX gender equity thing in colleges, because obviously the game has grown through college, uh, you know, both boys and, and, and girls, is, well, they don't have that, from what I understand. They don't have a university system that sponsors sports like we do in Over America, in, York, right, okay. in, in England. And so they don't have, like, so I had a friend back in the day who uh, coached at one of the SEC teams, you know, a uh, girls team there, and the, the, the support they get is tremendous, you know, like, so he couldn't spend his budget because, you know, with the whole so system. So is this guy getting paid? Just a little bit. But All like, right. so, so what I'm saying is, is like, so the, the facilities, the coaching, the resources. I mean, I, I think it's now 14 scholarships in the women's game. Men get 9.9. .9. Men's soccer. Women get 14. The women has 360 programs, something like that. Men have 200. So there's more women's sports. So there's fantastic opportunity here in the U.S. for women's play, and I'm obviously seeing that more here uh, in the U.S. Yeah, right, yeah, right, which, right. Which, which is great. And so it's going to be interesting how it develops in there because they don't have the university system, they don't have Title IX. So uh, it's going to be fascinating. But one of the things that was interesting to me is the cost for the parents of these kids with this training session. It was 250 pounds. So 250 pounds. What uh, is that? Four hundred dollars. Three hundred and fifty dollars. Four hundred dollars. Used to be more, but three hundred and fifty dollars yeah. for the year. Well, that's huge in a sense. For the sake is, when my boy was playing, it was X amount of dollars to belong to this club, right? To play soccer, you have to. It was X amount of dollars. So, if you're paying <clears throat> three thousand dollars to join the club, or two thousand dollars to join the club, plus tournament fees, plus maybe uniforms, travel, yeah. plus travel, right? You could be over ten thousand dollars. <clears throat> so. You travel, and your boy doesn't play, or your girl doesn't play. If you just spent ten thousand dollars, how do you think that's going down? Not again. Okay, it? then uh, the coaches have to make money, right? So now we have a particular parent that puts it into the club, puts some money into the club. You think his kid's playing? Yeah, absolutely. Just... It was. I've seen it, and it was a nightmare. There yeah. were so many politics involved. There's politics in everything, but it was. 
it was over the top. So when you're throwing money around, but now if you're only paying, what did you say, 250 yeah. pounds? That takes a lot of that out of that. And now I don't have to play this kid. I don't have to do this because of their parents. I don't have to hear all this grief. But on the same side, the parents have a right. If you're investing all this money, it's an investment. Where's my investment? Right? Well, I'm promised he's going to get a college. If I play on this team, he's got this, he's got that. What's it? 1% go Division One. I. I don't know what, what the, the exact numbers are, but that, that's a problem here. Right? If it was $250, now the people want to be there for a reason. It's not because of the cost or they have to or the coach is making money. Uh, I do believe coaches should make money. I do. But at what cost are they persuaded, right, to play certain individuals? Because if – and then this could be the other side of it. Well, they're paying all this money. I want them to stay in the club. I have to play their kid, right? And I do think all kids have to play if they want to get better. So there's this, there, yeah, there's it, a problem it, there. Yeah, I, I, I agree, and it, it's a difficult dynamic and a real challenge for coaches too and, and clubs. You know, uh, you know, and again, I, I think how why was it so less there? Well, I think this training club was subsidised by the Football Association or see. US Soccer, let's say. So it's subsidised by and the pro club is behind it too. So like, and this is why I'm telling. I think again, MLS, MLS is key because they will subsidise these costs so that it comes down to what you and I believe as sportsmen. At the end of the day, is best players playing. It doesn't sure. matter sure. How, who, much what, how much I'm paying. Your parents right, pay. Yeah. So it doesn't matter how much they donate. It's about being you're either better or you're not. And right. that purity. I think again, uh, missing a little bit at times, and then it's all, and that's one of the challenges we face. But. All right, question: How have you changed over when you first started coaching to now? I think I was a little bit more as typical as a young coach, a little bit more uh, um, vim and vigor, the kind of <laughs> no, like you know, uh, um, focused, uh, you know, very uh, like un physical, un uncompromising, like uh, like uncompromising that you know. I, at the end of the day, certainly as a coach, I, I, I get we're in the, you know, my mentality obviously is I would like to win. I want to win. I want to win as a player. I want to win as a coach. I want to be the best, right? I mean, it's just as yeah, competitive. It's, compe we have. Mark's very but, competitive, you know, by the like, way. So, very competitive guy. Yeah, uh, so, so that, that goes back to uh, family, right? Because my, my family in England are butchers, and we wanted to be the best butchers in the town. Butchers, so. butchers, yeah, not budgers, yeah. butchers. No, not budgies. Butch, butch, butchers, butchers. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Good. So, that's why you said butch. Right, yeah. My parents were butchers. Yeah, Go ahead. Uh, so, so it goes back to that <laughs> a little bit. But anyway, so I think I was a little bit more, and I've learned are a lot. Are butchers you know? competitive? Well, again, my family was. They wanted to be the best butchers in that town. So, I'm with you. Okay. So it doesn't matter. I didn't know whatever, they were competing for cows. Whatever it is, yeah, you got to do it. The first that, one man. to cut the cow's legs off wins. <laughs> hey, you know what? We were competing with like the big superstores and all that stuff, but we still have three small shops. Okay, on sorry, high I got you off track. Go ahead. So, uh, uh, but yeah, so I think like, some of that mentality comes through a little bit, but uh, but I think I was uncompromising then, and maybe a little bit, you know, now I'm a little bit more wiser. I, I think I know. I've developed my senses about people and different ways to do things, and not so. So that's good. I, I so think. no, not one direction. No, and, and understand that people can go things in different ways and still be very successful. It doesn't have to sure, be right. always that my way. Sure, right. That's your way, your yeah. path, right? And, and I think you're always adapting as a coach. I mean, if you're smart, you realize. I mean, at the end of the day, you've got to know people, and you, you realize. I mean, we, we were doing something yesterday as a department. It's about generations, the differences between Generation Z and millennials and millennial parents and Generation Z parents and, and, and just the different human behavior that goes on. So I think I've learned a lot in that area, too. Uh, Don't you think, though, with the human behavior now, everybody's complaining that everybody's too soft? In a sense, they get away with everything. They're a little bit too soft. And that's what you'll hear from the old school people. So, you see it all the time, I but I just think it's, yeah. I think if you, if you try to read people, if you try to understand people, everybody's got a story. And if you can try to figure that story out, that's whatever path they've taken, and you can play upon that. Plus, if they can take, the, you take that story, whatever they have, and try to mold it into something that you want a little bit, or your environment, right? And this is the way we do it kind of here, but I understand your story. But for us to be successful as a group, as a whole, we're trying to accomplish this. But I do understand 
where you're coming from. Yeah. That's right. a little different. And it's fascinating. I mean, because you know, it's like, what is your truth? What, where do you come from? And you've got to listen to that. It might not be mine, but it's yours. And you've got to be out of empathy for that. So I, I think it's a fascinating one. I don't, I'm like you a little bit. I don't really, you know, I think it's, I don't want to become an old fashioned guy and be like, oh, you know, my generation. No. You know, I even spoke I to my dad about this. He's like, you know, after World War II, we were on rations, you know? And like, Okay, that's different. That's your story. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, your, yeah. That's right. So, and you've got to appreciate that. So, uh, uh, you know, I, I do find that that part of it fascinating. And I don't believe, like, you know, okay. And again, every generation has challenges, and we've got to know that. And and from what I'm understanding, this generation C is going to be, you know, uh, different again, which is in an exciting way. But like, I I always do this in my mind, and it's something in my office I think about sometimes when I hear comments like you know, blah, 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 negatives about certain generations. Like, there's this quote out there, and it says something like, you know, this generation is soft, it doesn't work hard, it doesn't respect its elders, all this stuff. And then the guy who said it was Socrates from, like, yeah, before yeah, right, right, Christ. Right, right. Like, so it's not a new thing to, you know, so every generation seems to say it about another. So uh, I just think... Do you change in that fashion, then? You think yeah. you're more open to what a person's about, right, instead of just your one direction? Yeah, it's, it, you have to be. I mean, if you're not adaptable like so that... So why weren't you then in the beginning? What's that? Why weren't you in the beginning and then you evolved to this? Because younger, you didn't know any better, stupid. maybe. Right, you, know, you didn't like, know any better. I thought I knew it and sure. I didn't, you know, but I think to stay, even stay relevant, you'd be foolish you not to, to figure out you know, what your story is or what this generation has gone through or whatever, you know? So uh, I think that's part of it. It just makes common sense to me that, you know... You want to be adaptable and, and understand people at the end of the day. That's my, the business I'm in. So top three coaches in the world. Whoa. Well, I, I, at the moment, and I've read it twice now, and I'm trying to, my challenge right now to myself is to try and fit in, how does Guardiola's concepts fit into college soccer, right? Well, and, and, and that's and difficult. It I don't, know why, it, I, I don't so, know why it can't, but I don't know what he's telling them behind the scenes. Yeah, yeah I know, and I, he's got two books out, one of them when he's at Bayern Munich, the, another one at Man City, and so I've read the Bayern Munich one twice, and it's fascinating, his analysis. Did you know that he lived in New York for like 10 months? New York he came, after he, he yeah. left Barcelona? Yeah. yeah no, and right? then he, nobody knew him, mm -hmm. and he had friends, mm -hmm. and he met with the Kasparov, the chess champion, a lot, because uh, he was he using, wanted to figure, right. figure out chess mm -hmm. and different things in chess that would have applied to soccer. So he's a very fascinating guy, and he would study uh, you know, modern technology, because he, me, for me as a coach now, I mean, like Science I told you, it's, it. yeah, it's it. like, why would you... Well, even just like apps and group me and, you know, doing different things on the on video that you can do, which we would never do before, which is, you, but, but to connect to people of that generation, of this generation is important. So I find that's a, fa I think he is fantastic. I think he'll go down as one of the best coaches ever. Uh, so, so I'm trying to figure out, all right, the 15 pass rule, how does that affect us? And, you know, he holds a higher line of his defense. He, he talks about... You know, in order to do that, that means you, and you would know this is an attacking player. Instead of having Ribéry and uh, the Dutch guy, I forget his name now, but... Uh, Robin. Rob, um, yeah, and have, instead of having them 80-yard runs, by holding a higher line, they have to right, make 40-yard right. runs, right. which They're makes them more explosive. To objective. Right? Yeah, and then he talks about dominating the ball. But again, I'll challenge you, this year, watch a college soccer game, and tell me about dominating the ball. Like, it's, it's, it's a very scrappy game, college, because of this intensity. Because I think that system we talked about before, the subbing system, helps defense. Because in my, in, in my game, like I was telling you about when I was young, in the world game, fatigue is a factor, man. If you've gone 85 minutes nonstop, it's a factor in the game, right? But you take it away a little bit when you rotate players so much, and then that helps defense. And that's why I think it's more scrappy and not as flowing. So, so again, going back, where does Guardiola's concepts fit into the college game? And certainly I think with the sub-rule, most colleges will press and, and it makes sense because you've got this rotation of players. So you can do that. Stay yeah. fresh. You can. Yeah. Okay, Why so would you not press? Then oh, again, sure. so, so my question is this then. So, all right then, you're going to press me. So shall I build out of the back? And if I build out of the back, am I saying, okay, come on. Come to me, right, so and I'm going to break behind. you down with these space. things that I've got in the right place in the right places, and then I'm going to hurt you behind you. Because mm -hmm. if you're going to press me, there's space behind you. So how do I do that? So like, oh, am I being foolish trying to play like Guardiola when I don't have the players to do it? So these are the little, I think, challenges. But I think to answer your question right now, I think Guardiola is number one for me. Um, and I, I put Klopp as two because I think he's fun and 
uh, positive and uh, you know he's got that personality type. He's always smiling. I mean, I'm amazed. Sometimes by it's a fake smile, I know, but it's a I, smile. He's I, got I, that I, smile. You gotta love the guy. I, I mean, you know, he, I like him. I, th I like I, what I like he's put too. together. Yeah, and, and like, he had a vision. He did it. And he stuck by it, mm -hmm. and he he brought the right players in, uh, and, and they're a hardworking, honest. Skillful team. So, right. so, like questions. Like, and I, I was doing that this summer because I was trying to figure out my own mind. So, you've got like this uh, Bayern Munich method of, uh, of that Hoinkies guy. Who? How? How does he press? How does Guardiola press? And how does Klopp press? And how are they all a little different? So, and because again, the I think college soccer is a pressing game. It I mean, can be. Uh, yeah. And it, how it, many times the coaches kind of? And I don't really want to do this because, and this goes back to the vision of what you're trying to do. Is like so. Do I want to just win games? Is that what it's about for me? Do I want to win games? I think I think so, but we go back to why can't you do both? You're saying you can't. I I don't know, or you didn't say you can't, but you think it's difficult. So I'm getting this message a little bit. And if you have a system and you're pick, picking players that you want in the system, similar to what Klopp does or, or Gloria, he's got a system. He gets certain types of individuals to play on his team because he knows he can play that system. Same with Klopp. Right? They, he brings in certain types of players that can fit into his system that can play that way. So why not at the college level or any level that if this is my image as a coach, then I'm going to bring in players that can play this particular style for me. So when you say you can't, not you, but in general, we can't, well, you might have to find those particular players. And for me, and this is what drives me more, like it's not just about winning games. It cannot be that shallow. It for development, but for no, college to for win. for college either. I mean, I know I understand the realities of it and the business side of it and, and, uh, and this concept that, you know, obviously you've got to win games. But, like, it's not just about that for me as a coach. It is not. Like, I want to do more than that. I want but can to be you able do to, both, I'm asking yeah, you. Yeah, well, that's the challenge. You, you, absolutely, you're trying. That's the vision is can you break down teams, play an attractive style that players like to play, that you like to coach, mm -hmm. that spectators want to watch and win games. Yes. Because, yeah, and that's what the challenge is and the vision is. Like, so, but you, it takes a bit of bravery to do that, to be honest, because a lot of coaches will dump a ball okay, and next. then just press and then they get offense so Mark, from turnovers So alone. So why not, you're saying be brave. Best players in the world, are they brave? Yes. Best coaches in the world, are they brave? Yes. So why wouldn't you implement that into the kids that you're bringing well, up? Not you, but in general. It's easy said and done because, again, if you're building out of the back, are you prepared? Well, let's say that, not just that, yeah. but in general. They have this mindset, yeah. right? You're, that's where I think 95, maybe higher than that, 98%, 99% of where the player's confidence comes from. There's a mindset. If I can get this kid in the right mindset, that's a huge step. Then now we can create something else, right? Now you're taking them to the next level. So again, you're going to pick particular players. Some people like four, four, two. You know, four, four, two, three, one. You know, four, three, three. I don't know, but anyway, you're picking certain players to play this particular system, and and you have something in your mind that you want them to play. And now you're going to be creative. You're going to give them this mindset that starts them off in some kind of positive yeah. situation. So a lot of that is me. Have I done it? I, I've done it pro-wise, changed the team from two and seven. They win a championship uh, at college, changed their mind. They couldn't get past the first round. I went in there, and I thought, well, I like to play brave. I like to do something with trickery. I like offense. I like getting forward. So we, it, we changed it. It went from worse to better once they changed that concept. They realized, and they had the confidence. I'm not saying all cases. There's sometimes we're horrible, right? But I believed, I did at that particular time, we can change this. I'm not going to change it because I want, as a player, when I played, if you stifled me, if you said you can't do this and you can't do that, I don't want to play. I did not want to play. I'm not saying discipline, no, not having discipline. Yeah. I'm saying you're not allowed to go here. You're not allowed to go forward. You're not allowed to create. Yeah. I, I don't want to play the game. Well, so it, that's what I tried to implement. So now you're going to a very interesting thing. But, but, but again, two things. One is... I think as coaches, I would hope you want to be inspirational, right? And so you can't you can't just be about being judged on winning and losing alone. And I think you know what I'd like to do, and I'd like to do what I'm at now at Gettysburg is to players want to be there because they're excited to play yeah. there and they're inspired. And they, and so, but not again, there's different ways to do things. So um, you know, I, I I think it's important again that you have that kind of higher vision. And again, it's to, to help coach. players be inspired. Um, 
Well, you gotta got have a third coach. You gotta got have a third. He took the top two teams. I know, and I like watching him play. I like watching him play. Let me think. Um, who else would I pick in that group? Because you know, there's some, it, it, no, there's some interesting personalities. Did you hear what he said, okay. by the way? I, I don't. I, I, don't, I don't like him. I, like, I don't mean to say that about any player. He's probably a great coach. I don't like his facial expressions. I don't like how he, uh, what he does with players uh, that way. He might be a great coach. I don't know that. But just from what I see, it, it would turn me off as a player. No. I just I think you have to have your players back regardless. And if it doesn't work out, well, then in private, there's a time face-to-face. -face, then you, you decide what you're going to do with this particular player. I don't like the... I, I, I don't like that. But uh, you know what? He's, he's a perfect for entertainment, isn't he? He's perfect for Yeah, but drama. as a player. Yeah, player? no, no, yeah, no, he's a, obviously very, can be negative and defensive, but he's just, and he's a funny pundit even, but yeah, so I think he's good for the league and he's good for the drama because you've got somebody so positive like Guardiola who's very positive about the game and very inspirational, I think, and uh, about attacking, attacking. Right. The one thing you say is attack, 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 attack. He's the best form of defense. The reason... The, you know he's very good defensively. He says because of the way that he attacks. Like he, you know, he wants to own the middle of the field. He he, he wants to keep people Higher. furthest away from the goal. All that stuff. So mm -hmm. you got him, but then you've got the dark lord on the other side. So it's beautiful Coming entertainment, back, like right. where he's uh, you know a little bit more cynical and. You know, he plays it's great the for the game, it's but great. I don't. I, I personally don't like it. Right? Yeah, yeah. So, no, no, I don't so, either. So who's your third coach? Uh, uh, but let me say, what did you hear? What Marino said lately? He says there's four teams for the Premier League this year. The B teams. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it was funny though. Like, what does he say? He says Liverpool, Man City, Tottenham, and Man City's B, B team. team. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just but again, it's for TV. But but uh, so I'm trying to think of a third guy that I really okay, like. Okay, skip the third one then. Who's your top three players? You know, what I like. Uh, Top three players. Okay, so obviously I, I do like Messi. I mean, I, okay, I, Messi. Yeah. We're, we're all for that. But who's your top three players? No, I like Messi. Oh, Messi. Yeah, not Man City. Messi. Uh, so I like him. Um, I like. I'm trying to think of the United group, but this is difficult in that group because they've got so much turmoil. Go ahead, they? Messi. Come on, come uh, on. Um, you can put me on the spot here. Put him on the spot. This is what he does for a living. Watches games every day. But I'm not into individual players. Oh. But let me think about. Let me think about it. Give me a second. Here. Oh. Uh, who, who, oh. who have I got? I've got Liverpool. Yeah. So I like Sane. Ah. Uh, 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 he's great. Uh, and then I, and I like the uh, African player for Liverpool too. Uh, what am I thinking of? Um, the front African three for Liverpool. African player. Yeah. You're talking about from Egypt. You're talking about. Salah? Salah is one. Uh, the Salah is what I meant for Liverpool. Uh, um, oh, and I like uh, De Bruyne. Well, that's not a bad choice, is it? Uh, yeah, yeah. No, I just like him. I just think he's no, a he's fun great. player to watch. He's great. You know? uh, but I do like Aguero, too. Aguero, Aguero my God. He, yeah, that guy scored goals. And he goals, comes and he scores you know? goals. And gave uh, so you've got Messi. You've got, I don't know who you said the second one. Aguero. Aguero. Salah. And Salah. Uh, yeah, and, and, and they're four, all uh, um, forwards. Uh, yeah, no, yeah. Yeah, no, I, I like those players. They're exciting to watch. I, I mean, mean, Messi's always up there, right? If I had to choose a player, if I had to choose a player, I like, you said Sané, right? Hmm. I like Sané's a, the guy who plays for Man, Man City, City. Right? He's the kid yeah. that's getting... German guy. Right. Yeah, yeah. I like Mane. Who's the African player for Liverpool? Wide. Yeah, yeah. well, yes. I yeah. love him. Hmm. I right. think his work rate's unbelievable. He can take players. Or he scores goals. Dynamic. I think he was at the top. Uh, I think that's, that's what I meant to say. <laughs> <laughs> I, you probably did, yeah. but he's one of my friends. I do like Neymar. Yeah, no, I do like. I don't I, think very few people can do what Neymar does. Yeah. I, I think he gets a lot of grief for all the stuff he does, yeah. but for him, he can break pressure. When he played for Barcelona, I thought he was tremendous. I think he's come to a hard patch right now. Yeah. Uh, but I think he's. I think he's. I'm I think not he's surprised very you would like Neymar. I love him, yeah. and I think it's a player. I think I. I could get into their head. I could work with some player. Uh, we're almost done, but I remember when I was coaching, and we had players. When I was coaching the Blast, uh, second year, my second year, and there was players no one wanted. Right there was a kid. There was a guy so named you Gilbert. Like that challenge, there, right? the, oh, there was a guy named Chili Farias. When I saw them play individually uh, for other teams, I thought like, these guys are tremendous. But I found out down the line when I wanted them that I could get them for free almost, and I thought, well, that's a problem. These guys are very good individual players. They're very good players. And they said, yeah, we'll, we'll make that trade. And I thought, are you kidding me? Why? Well, I knew there was trouble. Yeah. But 
I loved it. Yeah. They ended up being MVP in the championship series. They were so valuable for me. They lasted only two years, right? Uh, they got in trouble out of my control. But I, I love that. I, I, so, again, getting back to I see a Neymar. I see there's something going on there. But I think as a coach, you always think you can do something for that period of time. I don't know. That's my personal and, opinion. And I again. think that might be one of your strengths because, Could you know. Because I was trouble. Yeah, it's right? time. And I was trouble. You, you know. And I was always misunderstood. Oh, my, my, my mother always said that. Oh, he's great. He, he's just misunderstood. He doesn't mean it. Well, and he, so I knew that I came from That's that kind of funny. Back, I came from that background. What does that mean? I was misunderstood. Misunderstood. It means he's doing something <laughs> that could wrong. Anything. Please forgive him. Yeah, yeah, no. That's what I oh, think. Oh, he's just was. misunderstood. Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> he's misunderstood well, from this job, this job, right, this team, this team. Right. But anyway, but uh, Neymar, was, though, though I, I think again is part of this entertainment because obviously he's off the field stuff and the comment. The media portrays him quite poorly right now. Right now they don't. Yeah, but, but that, when he that, comes uh, back at midfield, deep in the midfield, whole Holds the ball, takes it, big, comes inside, creates space, and plays off. Very few players can do that. I mean, do, do what he does. But now if we can get him in a, 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 dis, a more disciplined situation, right, when he's with Messi, when he's with Suarez, when he's uh, those three, he there's, wasn't there's top no dog, doubt, was he? There's no doubt he, he's an extremely talented and great player. Again, but I just think, like you say, at times, you know, you wonder from what's been reported about uh, is he a team player? And you well, He know, was then, wasn't yeah. he? So again, that, that, that's for you as a coach. Do maybe you could you'd be able to manage that, and some coaches aren't prepared to do that, you know. But uh, um, who's the other player for PSG that's really good? The French guy that's uh, he's really like 17, 18 years old, and he's very good. Uh, oh, jeez, Mbappe. Yeah, Mbappe. Yeah. Mbappe's on yeah. another level at Mbappe. this point. Mbappe. Is that my baby, name? my baby, and baby, my baby, 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 baby. and baby. Yeah, yeah, my baby. No, he was, he's he's on a different level. That right. kid can play. Yeah. His his he's athletic ability. He's smart. Yeah. He cuts. He can finish. What uh, do you think of Pogba? Pogba has to be in the right situation because he did it for France, right? He did it for France. I think he's a very, very talented player. Uh, I think he he has to want to play all the time, every minute. And someone's, he's got to, someone's got to believe in him. I think he's got to be in a situation to where he knows what his role is. Right With Man U, he was supposed to be the man. He was up a little bit higher. He held back. He didn't know where he was quite going in between. He was trying to do it all on his own. When he played for France, he knew where he had to play. And he was, he's, he's obvious he's a talent. Well, the other day, he played a tremendous ball tough. with his outside of the ball. Yeah, under the, yeah, uh, Rashford, Rashford, and he, yeah, he yeah, finishes. Yeah. They quite look good. Can he, do, can he be consistent? I don't know. Yeah, no, and that's, he's, he's actually been inconsistent. Right. And he sees this tremendous talent, and then you don't see it. So, And I don't know what's going on behind the scenes with his coach, with this. Agent, what, yeah. I don't know anything that, that way. But, yeah, he can play. You know what amazes me a little bit? Me? Yeah, it's me? not you, right. uh, unfortunately. But uh, it is, how do these players, and Messi like, is an example, is play at the level they play at consistently? Because every week, day in, day out, the pressure on them. And that's how, what how makes they, them the best players. In the, that's that. why like they make psychologically that. And a free kick and, and another one. And a Ronaldo. Yeah, people may yeah. not like him, but every year he scores. Yeah, every time he does his discipline, he, he works his ass off. I mean, this is what you got to look at. Not just because he has millions and millions of dollars and he's in a car and he's a pretty kind of guy, right? Bullshit. I think that's total bullshit. The amount of work that goes in with what they do every day, what me and you have gone through doesn't compare to what these people are going through on a world scheme. Michael Jordan was down at, the, uh, down at Ocean City in that tournament, and they wouldn't leave him alone. They're saying they thought there what, was a sighting. What tournament? The, uh, the, the, the beach soccer tournament? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, he was at the uh, Marlin Open. Okay. Wayne Marlin. And just because he was mentioned, they tried to get pictures. They tried to... That level is a different level. And for you to be competitive every day and... And, and to perform and, and make it happen every day. It's I'm crazy. Like... It's crazy. So I don't know. Anyway, we, are, we have to cut this short. We're going on for almost an hour and a half. Mark, brilliant. Brilliant today oh, to have Mark here, my man. He's not my level. Okay, so he's, <laughs> he's in here. Brilliant, right? i, I got to have you back, too, again, because I think you could talk more forever. Uh, yeah, no, I don't know what you like the, uh, you know, those like psychological. We haven't quite got into that yet, but uh, maybe another time if I can get him uh, down this. Where do you live now? So Where do you, you live? Where are you living? I live in West Yeah, see? We'd have to get an Uber for him. 
from you like those sheep. I do. I don't know what he's doing. Don't these sheep. Like he loves them. sheep. But anyway, thank you again. So, so does this work? No, does this go like on like? Uh, Can I finish this? Can I finish? No. Thanks again to Mark, oh, you're doing to Morgan, right? Again, episode two went brilliant. Again, thank you, Mark.